Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Roosevelt Field. I'm Jeff Brandon, along with Walt Fry, and we're just about to begin another Norristown Eagles football game here at Roosevelt Field. Tonight, a big game for the Eagles, their third game of the season. They are playing perennial standout Central Bucks West, and the Bucks come into this ball game 2-0, the Eagles 1-1. One and, one. and Walt, boy, I tell you, just looking at some of the figures, the size of some of these uh, these Bucks players is just unbelievable. Yeah, well, Jeff, that's the one thing they always bring to the table is that good size. Um, obviously, they're, they're well coached and well disciplined and very talented, but they always just have the natural size. And the scary part of it is their coach says they're not even as big as Abington, who beat up Narstown last week. Wow. Well, I tell you, Narstown... Uh, Really uh, outplayed last week by the Ghosts of Abington in, in what was certainly considered an upset. Um, Abington played an absolutely flawless game, however. Um, took it to the Eagles. That was the Eagles' first league game of the season after a non-league victory in their first game against Westchester Henderson. So the Eagles with a, a big test early on here in this season. And the Bucks um, handily defeated Cumberland Valley and... Uh, uh, a perennially tough team in Pensbury, and uh, the Bucks just manhandled Pensbury. Yeah, that's for sure. It was a 30 to six blowout, and uh, the Bucks were were just uh, looked like they were in midseason form already uh, as they came out and just did anything that they wanted to. Uh, so their offense is really clicking this year as they return a lot of starters, and their defense has certainly improved over what they thought it would be. And folks, as you take a look and see the captains come off the field, uh, the Eagles win the toss. They will be defending the end zone to the left of your screen, and they will be receiving. The Eagles, of course, in their all-blue uniforms with the white numbers, the Bucks with the white jerseys, black trousers, yellow helmets. And uh, Mike Petton, the head coach for the Bucks, Walt, his 30th season at the helm of this unbelievable dynasty in, in high school football. Well, it's to the point of being a legend now, Jeff. I mean, he 
uh, every year comes out and has a tremendous program. And now he has kids who, even though he is a tremendous coach with a military background and, and, and coaches with a tremendous amount of discipline, now he has kids who wouldn't dare disrespect him just because of his legendary status out in Bucks County and, and really state and nationwide. So uh, that just helps to build on his program as it helps to Roger Grove to have his experience and reputation. But uh, yeah, Mike, Mike Petten is, is certainly one of the best around and always carries his team up to the top this year to start out number two in the state. So they're right back home where they belong. Of course, not quite the drama that we had for this matchup last year out in Doylestown when Narstown had entered the season, a preseason number one ranking in some polls. Uh, many people picking the Eagles to, uh, to become state champions. Uh, that obviously wasn't to be as the Eagles finished six and four last season. The Bucks, however, did go on to make the playoffs, finished 10 and two, losing in the, um, the district championships to Plymouth White Marsh. But boy, uh, last year coming into that ball game, we thought we were gonna have uh, quite an affair. And really, except for one big uh, Damon Carroll kick return, it was all Central Bucks West. And they've got a large segment of that same squad returning this year. That's for sure. And, and the, the difference is Central Bucks West every year expects to be there. Narstown, whereas some years they may have the talent to do it, uh, doesn't necessarily expect to be there every year despite their preseason rankings. And that's really the two di the differences in these two programs right now. Not necessarily these teams this year, but just the programs in general. Uh, and it's something that Narstown has obviously hopes to attain and hopefully will it someday. So back deep for the Eagles, they'll have three players. DeAndre Baker, number 15, Lofton Thompson, number three, and Desmond Wright, number four, doing the kicking chores for the Bucks. We'll get you that number in just a moment. Looks like number 15, Steve Patterson. So we're ready to start here. It's a beautiful night. We've got cloudy skies, but really no threat of rain. It's a nice, cool evening, and we're underway. The kick is low. It's hit by one of the up men, taken by James Kelly at about the 25-yard line. Check that, make it the 30, and really no gain from Kelly as he tries to run side to side. Good downfield coverage. And Walt, a strategy that we saw last week repeated here by the Bucks. Abington would not kick deep last year. And, uh, and now they've elected to go uh, with the same, uh, same kicking pattern here. Yeah, there's no reason to change based on uh, the films that you saw. So coming out for Norristown, it'll be number five, Frank DiMedio starting at quarterback this week. In place of number one, John McClure, who finished up against Westchester Henderson and played the whole game against the Abington Ghosts. So the Eagles have the ball first and 10 from their own 28-yard line. DiMedio with the quick handoff to Thompson. Good for several yards. He plunges out to about the 32-yard line before he's dropped by the Bucks line. And it's going to take a huge effort from that Narstown offensive line tonight. That line tackle Al Zone. The tackle on the other side, number 71, Eric Schrader. The guards are James Burrell and Nick Talone. The center is Brian Webster. In the backfield with DiMedio tonight will be Lofton Thompson, number three, and James Kelly, the fullback, number 33. Wide receivers, number 15, the playmaker, DeAndre Baker, and number 11, Jimmy Zitzer. Those receivers are split right now. Baker to the bottom of your screen. DiMedio with a long count. Goes up top, looks inside, and he's quickly dropped for a loss in the first sack of the ball game. DiMedio tried to go to his left there, Walt. I don't think he could see the receiver. There was a big buck player right in his face. Yeah, well, the, that's the one thing you lose a little bit with DiMedio is a little bit of that mobility that we saw McClure demonstrate last week. Uh, DiMedio does come from the left side, though, so a little bit of difference from, for the, the line and the receivers and everybody. Uh, but he's, he's going to have to avoid stepping up in that pocket at 5'11 uh, with only a three-step drop because the Central Bucks West defenders are going to be right on top of him. Well, brings up third and 10 as there was a three-yard loss on that last play, negating the gain on first down. Third and 10 for the Eagles. They put Baker in the slot. This time they pitch to the short side to Thompson. He looks to turn the corner, but nothing doing. Four guys in on the tackle there for the Bucks. Call it a gain of a yard, and the Eagles will be faced with an early fourth down, and they will be punting. Right, and when you see those four guys getting down that line that quickly, and a lot of them being defensive linemen, that means that the Narstown line didn't hold them off on that play. Uh, and when you come to the short side of the field, you need to seal off a little bit, and that time, since what Bucks West pursued well. Doing the punting chores, number 30, Will Gant, one back deep for the Bucks. That's number 21, Charles Keller. Gant has the ball, plenty of time, a nice high kick. It's rather short, though, and we have it accepted at about the 44-yard line, and I thought I saw a wave for the fair catch there, and it looked like that gentleman wanted to start with the ball. <laughs> 
Yeah, he certainly fooled DeAndre Baker. DeAndre Baker thought he saw a wave, and then all of a sudden, the receiver started to take off on him. But uh, Central Bucks West will start right there with good field position at the 45. And an experienced fellow at the helm for the Bucks offense, Walt, in number seven, Travis Blomgren, joined in the backfield by two standouts, number 34, Dave Armstrong, who is just a bull, and Dennis Cliggett, number 21. First down, Blomgren off the right side, follows Armstrong, good for about six yards on the carry. And don't think that's rare or some early game trickery. Blomgren will run the ball and run it a lot. Uh, Armstrong's his big horse, 6'3", 255, only a junior. And Cliggett's a guy they'll send at you to mix it up a little bit with some speed. But Blomgren's certainly an extremely mobile quarterback. He can run as well, uh, but they have three guys out there who can take it a long way on you in that backfield. In fact, I believe Blomgren actually might have led the squad in, in, in running last year. He certainly had more than 500 yards on the ground in addition to over 700 yards passing. This time straight up the middle to Cliggett, and that's going to be close to a first down. That time Armstrong, the ball carrier, good for the first down. Give him four yards on the carry. Yeah, aren't... Blomgren was their leading rusher in, in carries and yards last year. Um, but you can tell that he was, he was grinding it out, not just a guy who's going to trick you. Only 3.9 yards a carry, which isn't quite so good for that Central Bucks West offense. But with Dave Armstrong hurt a little bit, Blomgren carried the load at 127 carries last year. So the Bucks on their first offensive possession into Eagle territory, first and 10 at the Eagle 45. Cliggett around the left side, stumbles a bit. He turns the corner, though. Picks up close to 10 yards on the play before he's finally knocked out of bounds. The Bucks showing no hesitation in bringing the ball right at the Eagles, Walt. Let's give you those defensive starters for Norristown. Across the front, a lot of guys who, who start on offense as well. Josiah Perry, James Burrell, Will Gant, Eric Schroeder, and Rara Lusain, the five-man front for Norristown. The linebackers, Al Zone and James Kelly, the leaders of that defense. And a defensive backfield, Lofton Thompson and Garvin Stewart, the safeties. DeAndre Baker and number four, Desmond Wright on the corners. They go to Cliggett off the right side. Plenty of room into the secondary. He's upended. Nice tackle that time by number 10, Garvin Stewart. But you've got problems when your safety's making open field tackles, Walt. Yeah, that's right. We saw the safeties making a lot of tackles last week against Abington. And I mean, you've got Todd Ryan at six feet, 225. You've got Adam... Domerad at 6'2", 255. Guys like that leading the Central Bucks West attack. When they run that power sweep, there's a lot of room out in front for the running backs. Another big gain, 15 yards it looked like on that last carry. First and 10 from the Eagle 20. Click it to the right side. Again, he gets to the corner. Baker pulls him down, but he's inside the 10-yard line. Good for another first down, and they are just tearing up the turf here at Roosevelt Field. It's a shame because the field looks so nice this year. <laughs> yeah, it's in, it's in very good condition right now, especially with a lot of the rain that we've had. Uh, but you don't see a, a team try, let alone succeed, at getting outside on, on many Narstown defenses. And that's a credit to the Central Bucks West line and their players for being able to, to turn that corner so well with just disciplined running plays and a lot of power. You're absolutely right, and with 7.40 to play here in this first quarter, the Bucks are marching handily. They have first and goal from the Eagle five-yard line. They go inside this time. Cliggett actually turns it outside, then turns it upfield, squares the shoulders, and waltzes into the end zone for a five-yard touchdown. Boy, that only took about the blink of an eye to uh, to pound the ball inside. And, and Walt, I, I guess this is what we were afraid of, and the... Uh, the unbelievable size of the Bucks just opening up huge holes for their backfield. Yeah, well, well, Norristown needs needs to prove at some point this season that they can stop the run, uh, and so far they they really haven't. Um, they've given up 467 yards just in two games this year, so really being run on a lot, and so far nobody's seen any reason to do anything else. The set is down, the kick is up, and the extra point is good. Nailed handily that time by number 15, Steve Patterson. So the Bucks out to an early 7 to nothing lead, 7.30 to play here in the first quarter. And Walt, the Eagles are going to have to do something creative here tonight because they are, they're going to have a tough time winning the Battle of the Trenches. 
it yeah, is, I'm it, sorry. It's, uh, it is. Uh, it's up to the coaching staff, really, to come up with some sort of scheme. We mentioned that they have a lot of guys going both ways, but even if they didn't, they're just smaller than a lot of the teams that they're going to play. And you, if you go straight with a five-man front against teams like Abington, Central Bucks West, big teams like Council Rock and Central Bucks East, it's just not going to work. You're not going to be successful at stopping the run, and that's what this conference and really most of high school football is built around. So it's going to take some sort of scheme, maybe tightening Zone and Kelly up, uh, to make a seven-man front and filling those gaps. So that's a 55-yard drive for the Central Bucks West Bucks. Six plays, all running plays. Dennis Cliggett carrying the load on four carries, 45 yards. And only taking just over two minutes. So certainly the Bucks not meeting with any resistance there. And Narstown faced with a tough task now of having to even up once again. Well, while we have just a moment, let's uh, thank the Narstown Area School District for bringing you this ball game. Mr. Tony Koya, our producer, the Director of Communications for the School District. Mr. Sam Galbraith, who is directing our production this evening. We'd also like to thank the camera people who will be assisting us, Garrett Hickman and Matt McGran. In addition to Walt Fry and myself, we have Greg Fry doing statistics. So Patterson, after nailing that extra point, will attempt uh, probably another short kick from the Bucks. Eagles have the same setup here with Thompson, Wright, and Baker back. There it is, the short kick. It's going to have to be fielded quickly. I'll tell you, the Bucks were right on that ball, and that was one of the Norristown up men who actually came back to make that play. And yeah, they put that one right in no man's land, right in the middle of the first two lines of Norristown's kick return team. So Narstown is getting good field position, but not being able to get any returns going by virtue of the short kick. So the Eagles have relatively good field position taking over at their own 32 yard line. Again, it'll be Baker and Zitzer split wide. Kelly, the lone back, Thompson lined up in the slot. This time the hand handoff goes off the right side to Kelly and there was nothing doing there, loss of a yard. Well, I tell you, the Eagles can't even get the ball back to the line of scrimmage here. And it's an active linebacking core for the Central Bucks West Bucks. Chris McNutt, Dave Armstrong, who will come up to the line at, at times and probably get a lot of time up there on the line. Uh, really, really an active group as well as having good size. Second down, Demedio rolls to his left. Under pressure, escapes it, looks upfield. He's got some running room, cuts it back. Got one man to beat, turns to the outside, and oh, wow, quarterback to quarterback. Travis Blomgren came uh, from the backside there and really put a shoulder into Demedio. But I tell you, Demedio, a great job picking up the first down, really all on his own. Yeah, that's what they're going to need. They're going to need some special plays, some special playmakers from some people. Uh, Demedio did a nice job of, of being aware, staying poised, and being able to cut back. But uh, a lot of quarterbacks in the, uh, you'll see in, around will play safeties, but a lot of times just because they're great athletes and because they like to get them in there and, and not in a lot of contact. Travis Blomgren will go right at it, and he looks for contact. This time they go up the middle to Kelly, and that ball is stopped uh, probably a yard on the play, Walt, maybe. Yeah, they tried to tried to fool Central Bucks West that time by giving a quick hitter to Kelly and faking, and faking it to Thompson. But uh, unless there's a hole opened up there, there's really no, no reason, to, no need to fake anybody. Uh, the, the Bucks are still plugging that hole. So it'll be second down and nine. The ball is on the Eagle 47 yard line. The handoff to Thompson up the middle. He's got a little bit of running room. Good surge that time by the Norristown line. Gives Lofton Thompson some running room, and he picks up a few yards on the play. And the monster up there who Norristown's going to have a little bit of trouble fighting off tonight is Adam Buckley. Adam Buckley just towers over everybody. You can probably see him at some point tonight. Number 75 on your screen. He's 6'8", 235. So whereas Norristown oh. has trouble <laughs> just putting guys out there who, who are going to average 200 pounds, 
uh, Central Bucks West well over that, and a guy like Buckley with a tremendous reach and tremendous height going to make it tough if Demedio decides to throw. Third down and three, Walt. Eagles inside Bucks territory. They go to Thompson, and he has dropped for a loss. Boy, I'll tell you, that's just great penetration by that Bucks line. Loss of a yard on the play brings up fourth and four for Norristown, and here comes Gant in the punt. Clay gets back deep for the Bucks as the Eagles elect to punt from just into Bucks territory. The Bucks 49. There's pressure, almost blocked. I don't know how Gant got that off. It hits at about the 29-yard line and it's covered quickly by Norristown. Yeah, that Zit was Zitzer downfield. And Zitzer thought that it might have brushed his back, so he was aware that the football was right there behind him and nicely covered it to make sure the Bucks didn't uh, have a huge turnover right there, but. Norristown oh. tested again. Well, that was only a 20-yard net gain for the Eagles on that punt, but I'll tell you, it was almost a, a disaster. There was great pressure from the outside that time on that punt, and Will Gant basically kicked it under the guy's arms. Yeah, Will Gant's been, been pretty good this year as a punter, uh, unfortunately getting a little too much practice, but <laughs> has, it was extremely effective against Abington, and now has the Bucks behind their own 30. So the second offensive set, the backs go into the eye, everybody in tight. Blomgren, the hand off to Cliggett, off the right side, another big gain, call it 12 yards across the 40 yard line. And I'll tell you, there's nothing exotic about this. It's just uh, straight ram it down your throat football. And I'll tell you what, they're pounding that right side. They haven't even really come to the left side but once tonight. And they're having a lot of success over there on the right side. That's where wingback Leo Schultz is lined up. He's doing a lot of the bl lead blocking for Cliggett along with Dave Armstrong. And just when they'll lull you to sleep and come right with Cliggett, right with Cliggett, right with Cliggett, they'll pound you up the middle with Armstrong and then come left. Backs in the eye. This time they fake the Cliggett. Blomgren on the outside. He picks up about four yards on the play. Knocked out of bounds that time by James Kelly, Narstown's linebacker. And the fake was mildly effective. You had Rara Lusain and Will Gant, who absolutely refused to let Dennis Cliggett get any more yards over the right side. But uh, Blomgren managed to take it out wide and pick up a couple. Second and a long five, but probably about four and a half yards on that last pickup. The Bucks at their own 45-yard line. Blomgren out of the eye. Goes to Cliggett off the left side. First down. He's got more. He's going to have to get stopped. No, I don't think so. Looks like a touchdown. Dennis Cliggett, 50 yards for a touchdown. And boy, can this team play some ball. <laughs> that's for sure. There, there's really no stop in their running game right now. And that's what I said. They're going to go right, go right to the short side and keep it over there. And just when they think they have that left side opened up, here they come. And he had one man over in the corner, the only man who had a shot to get him. Uh, and he slipped right inside the corner with a good, good block from his receiver, and Cliggett was gone. Well, I'll tell you what, Garvin Stewart, the safety on the outside there, is the guy who had to get Cliggett. He was the, the last recourse. But did you see James Burrell? Down lineman for Narstown. I couldn't believe I saw 7-7 seven, seven flying down the sideline. He almost got Cliggett from his lineman position. There's the snap. The extra point attempt is up. It's good. And it's 14 to nothing. And Walt, I have a feeling it's going to be a long night. Yeah, well, it looks like it looks like you're going to need uh, either Narsdown to, to come up with, with a lot of pride here and, and just to make some sort of stop and, and come up with something that really is above their heads uh, or it's going to rely on the mercy of Mike Pettin and Central Bucks West. Wow. We still have 3.28 to play here in the first quarter. The Bucks are up on top 14 to nothing. Narstown's gotten one first down under their belts, um, and other than that, just been uh, manhandled so far. And I know it's a tough task when you have uh, such a such a size advantage for the Bucks, but somehow the Eagles are going to have to try and create something on their own. Well, Jeff, I still think that they're they're missing the presence of, of their playmaker, number three, Lofton Thompson. He's out there, but but he's still limping a little bit. Obviously, he's missing a lot of his speed. He's been banged up ever since the season started. 
And I really think that they're, they're missing his presence as the playmaker, the guy who can make the big hit and create the turnover. We haven't seen him come close to doing anything like that this year, and he, he did that for his first two years. The guy was a, a whirlwind out there. Uh, and so far this year, just nobody has made a big play for Narstan on defense. So that one's a three-play drive. <laughs> and that's all, Dennis Cliggett. We're getting smaller now. They have the number of plays that time. 12, 4, and 55-yard runs for number 21, Dennis Cliggett. He's now up to 112 yards and a 14-0 Bucks lead. Patterson actually kicks it deep. It's going to be taken by Thompson at about the 12-yard line. Up the middle, he's got some running room, turns it to the outside. Oh, just gets tripped up, brings it back to the 40. Well, now you know why Mike Petton was kicking the ball short. We do have a player down, a Bucks player getting up slowly. He is gathering himself, though, bringing himself to his feet. That's number nine, Brian Buckley. And Brian Buckley got plastered by Desmond Wright. Uh, Lofton Thompson just stepped by Buckley. Buckley turned around, and Desmond Wright laid into him. I mean, through a huge block, which hopefully will spark Norristown now. But now you see why teams don't want to kick off deep because Narstown will struggle on offense, but when you get it one-on-one -on -one with the playmaker, Narstown still has some guys who can excite you when they're running with the ball. Well, I think for the Eagles to get the ball on the board here, they're going to have to involve DeAndre Baker in the offense somehow. Demidio's got to find a way to get the ball to Baker. There's a guy who, after he catches the ball, uh, can really work some magic. Well, Jeff, this is probably one of the biggest talent gaps we've seen between the Bucks and the Eagles in, in a long time. And uh, Narstown's going to have to come up with something a little bit more creative rather than just the, the regular plays. Well, that time, uh, no gain as Thompson goes off the left side, tries to follow it over left tackle, and the Bucks stop that handily. And by creative, I, I don't, I'm not talking about Statues of Liberties and hooks and ladders and things like that. Uh, I'm just talking about quick throws out to somebody like a Baker. Like you said, let him use his speed, let him use his moves. Uh, because so far, the, the power running game that, that has worked for Narstown for so long just isn't working. They just don't seem to have the, the people to be able to run that sort of game. Not that they don't have talent. Uh, it may be just a different kind of game. Thompson comes off the field. He's got an equipment problem there. It's an official's timeout, but Thompson comes off the field. James Kelly back in. We also see Will Gant in the backfield. Gant is the, the other tailback for Norristown. And again, Zitzer and Baker come to the near side. Gant lines up in the eye with Kelly. Demidio takes a look on second and 10. The handoff comes to Gant off the right side. He picks up a couple. Good pursuit that time by the Bucks. On the bottom of the pile there, number 42, Chris McNutt. Let's call it three yards on the play, make it third down and seven from their own 42-yard line. And Gant's more of a fullback type. He's going to grind out some tough yardage, but he's not really the guy who's going to break one either. Uh, at this point, though, Norristown just needs to settle down, get a nice ball control drive. We're still in the first quarter, uh, which could be bad or good for the Eagles. If the Eagles uh, can get something going here, it'd be good for them. Yeah, they've got to control the ball for, uh, for a good amount of time here. Demedio under pressure, almost sacked. And boy, I'll tell you, he had a guy inside his helmet there, and he's getting a little talking to there by number 89 for the Bucks. That's Kevin White, who's only 6'3", 215, a small guy up front for the Bucks. And he was all over Demedio, and Demedio barely got the ball off incomplete, so it'll be fourth and seven. And he was looking for DeAndre Baker over the middle. They, they shortened Baker up a little bit, didn't spread him out so wide, tried to slant him under very quickly. Uh, but he got chucked within the legal five-yard limit right off the line, and Baker couldn't get past that. Central Bucks West linebacker who held him up, and that gave Demedio nobody to throw to. So Will Gant to punt again. Almost draw off sides. There's the flag. Must have been a good job that time with the cadence because uh, on the outside that time, White jumped early. Well, you said last time that they were getting some pressure, and, and West is really feeling it now. I mean, don't think that, that because of the maybe different directions these teams are going at, at this point in the season, that this isn't a huge rivalry. It is. And West would really like to put it away right now. And a punt block might have done that. Uh, so Kevin White 
as we said, is their, their small guy, their speed guy, their, their end rusher up on that line. And he was trying to get across. Right now, it makes for an inter interesting decision for the Eagles as that shortens it up to fourth and one. And with the media coming back out, he's going to call the signals and Gantz in there to punt. A wise decision, I think, as Narstown's still on their side of midfield. Snap is high. Gant pulls it down again, gets it off quickly. That's a fine kick. Baker's down there to cover. It's going to take an eagle bounce. Baker covering nicely. It's going to be down at about the 12-yard line of the Bucks. Some in the crowd there yelling, uh, go for it, Roger. Go for it on that fourth and one. But I agree with you. The game is not out of hand. Um, you know, the Eagles, if they can put a defensive stand together, don't want to give the Bucks um, any unnecessary yardage. Yeah, well, if you've proven that you can grind out consistent yardage against the team, maybe you think about it. I mean, you're not at your own 20. You are close to midfield. Uh, but the Eagles have, have run for almost as much negative yards tonight on carries as they have for positive yardage. So it really uh, wouldn't have been a wise decision. You might, Roger Grove really might have put his team behind the eight ball at that point. And now they have the Bucks pinned down, so it's a good time to make a stand, uh, get the ball back, and put some points on the quarter early on the board early in the second quarter. And the Bucks call timeout here with 140 to play in the first quarter. They lead 14 to nothing. If you joined us late on their first two offensive possessions, uh, the Bucks just whipped it into the end zone. Uh, once on six plays, the second time on three plays, capped by a, a Cliggett run of 50 yards. Not quite sure what Mike Petton has to talk over with his troops, but he did elect uh, to call a timeout. Yeah, you wonder how cautious can you be when you're up 14 nothing. your team is doing everything right. Uh, but in case the, the venerable one needs a clue, I'll tell him to send Cliggett right, and I think that might work for him. <laughs> Well, a much nicer evening tonight than last week's game against Abington. It was about 114% humidity and 92 degrees at game time, even after the sun went down. But tonight, a very cool evening, uh, nice breeze blowing, and, and really, um, the field's in great shape. Yeah, you can feel us moving into football weather a little bit, and unfortunately, after this game, we'll only have two more here at Narstown as their season is sort of front-loaded with the home games. Those other home games will be... Uh, October the 5th, a Saturday afternoon game, 2 p.m. against the Central Bucks East Patriots. And then they'll be playing on Friday night, October the 18th against Harry S. Truman. So you can come on out and take a first-hand look at this Eagles squad. Now we're ready for first and 10, a lot of movement. Blomgren keeps it himself, the bootleg, flag down, Lusain out in pursuit. Blomgren turns it upfield, picks up 16 yards. But let's wait and see what the flag is. Likely in that position, a hold. Yeah, I wasn't surprised to see a hold out there as one of the Narstown defenders got in deep, and the lineman, knowing that Blomgren was going to take it around that side, held his man off uh, to try and get Blomgren to the outside. And as they're explaining it to the defensive captain there for Narstown, uh, you can pretty much assume it's on the Bucks. And it looks like Narstown will push them back. That's Al Zone, the defensive captain out there discussing with the referee, and that's the call. It's holding. So with the original line of scrimmage being the 12-yard line, I guess we'll move it half the distance, knock it back to just outside the five-yard line. Yeah, That'll this set is, up first and 16 for the Bucks. Right, this is absolutely the time to to get a stop right here. And Even that, better, how about create a turnover? That's for sure, we'd love to see Narstown get one as they've only got one fumble this year. Click it off the right side, there he goes again, two guys out front, he erases that loss and brings it back almost for a first down, out to about the 20 yard line before he had uh, Al Zone land on top of him, down on the bottom of the pile, a couple other players for Narstown, looked like number eight for the Eagles also in on that play. Josiah Purry off of his defensive end position. We see number 73, Doug White, just came to the sideline for the Eagles. Roger Grove trying to use some uh, bigger linemen there. There's a good play. Cliggett stopped in the backfield, but I tell you, did a great job of maintaining his balance. Looked like Will Gant in on the penetration, but Cliggett somehow 
managed to uh, to keep that knee up and get the first down. It looks like. Yeah, Gant and Lucene are the are the penetrators on that Eagle defensive front. And as we talked about last week and a little bit tonight, that's their one advantage that the Eagles have over some other teams. They have to get the penetration and use their quickness. They're a little bit undersized, but the penetration is what's going to do it for them. And that time, both Gant and Lucene shot in there to slow Cliggett down. Uh, and credit the West running back for being able to stay on his feet and at least get back to the line of scrimmage or pick up a couple. And we won't have another play here in this first quarter as the clock just winds down to zero. So that's the end of 12 minutes of play. The Bucks doing a little bit better than a point a minute at 14, the Eagles zero. So we'll travel downfield. The Bucks will have first and 10 from their own 22 yard line and they'll be moving left to right now. And around Suburban One National, three games tonight out of the, out of the 10 teams in this conference. Aside from the action here at Narstown's Roosevelt Field, we have Ben Salem visiting the North Penn Knights, who are 0-1 after a tremendous season last year, and the Pensbury Falcons at Central Bucks East, the Doylestown's War Memorial Field. Seeing some action tonight with the Bucks down here and the Patriots of CB East, probably co-favorites along with the Bucks, although the Bucks are certainly uh, much higher regarded. But Central Bucks East made a lot of noise last season and capped it off by beating the Bucks in the final game. Tomorrow night, the other four teams will be in action. Abington at Harry S. Truman and the Chamonix will be visiting the Council Rock Indians who beat the North Penn Knights 38-28. So the season already heating up and you're starting to see some teams emerge. Abington playing Harry S. Truman, Jeff, will have a good chance to go 2-0. Uh, and from there on, you don't know what's going to happen because you never know who's going to jump up and beat a Titan like the Bucks. And you never, there's always a surprise in this conference every year. Could be the Ghosts. This time they go up the middle. The Eagles do a fairly good job at containment, but still I think we're going to have about a five-yard pickup on the play. And that was, again, number 21, Dennis Cliggett. Yeah, and that's when you're being dominated, when, when you can stack everybody up on that running back and the pile is just moving. And the thing is, Cliggett has a pocket of yellow and black surrounding him and not really being touched until he just runs out of that momentum and enough Eagles stop him up. Let's call it six yards on that play, second and four for the Bucks. They send Corey Potter wide. Around the left side for Blomgren, first down. He is ripped down on the far side of the field. Several players in there for Narstown, including number seven, Donald Vaughn, and it looked like Al Zone also out there. Boy, Blomgren with a lot of quickness, I'll tell you. He is uh, really sees the field well, hits those holes, and did a great job that time picking up another first down for his squad. The ball out close to their own 40, 39-yard line. Blomgren can fly, and he's extremely good at turning the corner. That's really his specialty. He turns the corner so well and, and really has great vision, and it helps to have guys that size out in front of you to block. Back to pass for the first time tonight. They wait, they wait, they go deep. Oh, wow. Outstretched hands that time of Corey Potter, and he just couldn't reel it in. But boy, Blomgren laid it out there uh, beautifully. Yeah, there's the other side of the athletic ability. He can put it out there on a rope, uh, and obviously he's pretty accurate. That's a that's a pretty long throw. That's about a 40-yard throw there, uh, and Blomgren about six inches too long for Corey Potter. But Donald Vaughn that time came underneath for the Eagles and trying to make the pick. And all of a sudden he looked up and saw that ball sail over his head. So Blomgren put a lot more on it than certainly Vaughn thought uh, and certainly certainly showed significant arm strength there. Looks like DeAndre Baker um, out of the ball game right now. They go to Armstrong off the left side and there's a big boy. He's brought down but picks up Looks like another five or six yards on the play. And on the bottom of the pile there, looked like Burrell for the Eagles on the tackle. And Norstown will have to gang tackle. Uh, there's no way that any single one of them is going to bring Armstrong down. And that's just a matter of size. Armstrong's bigger than anybody Norstown can even put out there on defense. And that's a one-on-one -on -one battle. So uh, it's going to take, take a lot of team effort and a lot of gang tackling for Norstown. And that's bound to wear you down. This kid's only a junior, Walt, 6'3", 255, playing high school football. 
Wow. Yeah, we say how much bigger can he get and how much longer can he stay in the backfield? I mean, he's bigger than any NFL running back you're going to find right now. Blomgren off to the outside to Potter. Nice stick. There it is. We haven't seen that in the two games we've been here, Walt, but Lofton Thompson just put it to Corey Potter, broke up that third down pass play, and it'll present fourth down, and for the first time tonight, the Eagles put a stop on. Right, well, that's what's given Narstown some juice on defense in the last two years. It was the hitting of Lofton Thompson, uh, and I think Central Bucks West made a mistake that time that they're not, not bound to make again and that's to put a ball out wide where Thompson can get a break on it. And it's surprising to see Thompson get a good enough push off that bad ankle, but he made a big play there, and just as the ball touched the receiver's hands, he put a helmet right into him. The snap, no real rush from the Eagles, a nice kick, high spiraling kick. DeAndre Baker waves for the fair catch, and that's a smart move at the 20-yard line. Excellent punt that time by the Bucks. And you know what I question, Walt, is if you're Mike Pettin, why do you go to the air? You're churning out the... Uh, 12 yards a carry, <laughs> and, and I, I guess you want to th show some variety in your offense, but uh, had that been me, I think I'd have put the ball on the ground on uh, on third down and four yards. Yeah, I think it could partially be just the respect that you're going to have for Narstown, knowing that at some point uh, they're going to stand up and be counted on defense. Uh, but if you watch the films of Abington last week, Narstown really never put up a stop. So you do wonder why he went to the air that time and risking the turnover. Uh, but you do have to vary the offense just a little bit. Eagles now, first and 10, Demedio, the late handoff to Thompson, no gain. He just can't get it moving. There's just no time to get an acceleration up, uh, and he takes two steps forward, and he's not, a, not able to move side to side or find any sort of hole. Obviously, his lateral mobility especially is limited by that bad ankle. Uh, so he's not going to be able to, to jump in and out of holes too much. And uh, with the Bucks coming straight at him, that's going to limit his yardage a lot. Eagles call time here. Roger Grove out to confer with his troops. 9.20 to play here in the first half. Once again, the Bucks up on top, 14-0. to zero. Well, Narstown settled down a little bit. And you hope to see them put together at least a couple of first downs right here, if only to give their defense a rest and start to swing the field position battle. We've got over nine minutes left in the second quarter. So certainly time enough for something to happen. Walt, after this game, uh here against the Bucks, the Eagles are going to be away for two weeks at Ben Salem and then at Neshaminy. Home against Central Bucks East, as we mentioned, then away against the Rock. Home at Truman, they finish up with two more tough games at Pensbury and then again at North Penn. Yeah, the North Penn game last year was, was really a classic. It was an excellent game. Two, two teams are about at the same level to finish up, so that should be another good one this year. The back's in the eye. Demedio, same play to Thompson, and pretty much the same result. They pick up about two yards on the play and that, that's one active defender right there Paul Picciotti for the, the Bucks uh, he's a roaming linebacker and he's really everywhere uh, he was the one who pursued Thompson to the outside that time as Thompson tried to bounce outside he's, he's met with no room in the middle so far tonight so he tried to find some room to the outside and Picciotti got out there to meet him so it's third and nine for the Eagles Ball at their own 23-yard line. This time they line up Gant and Thompson in the backfield. Little play action. There's the pressure. Demedio steps up. He's got time. Overthrows DeAndre Baker. That was tough, Walt. You had three guys out in the pattern and five guys out in coverage, and, and those receivers were fairly tightly clustered. Demedio slipped that one tackle from the outside from Kevin White, but... And yeah, the shame of it is, if he if he brings that ball in a little bit and puts a little more down the sideline, the receiver's got a chance at it because he did have a step on the defender. Uh, but McClure was just trying to step up into the pocket there, and a nice job of, of really keeping himself settled enough to throw it, but still overthrew it and maybe threw it a little bit early. Gant in the punt. Low snap. The pressure's on. Again, Gant barely gets it away. It hits at midfield. Bounces, bounces, and it's going to be down at the Eagle 49-yard line. So Dennis Cliggett stays safely away that time. 
James Burrell down to uh, touch the ball down. And the Bucks once again, good field position inside their own 50. And I apologize that time for saying John McClure. I, of course, meant Frank DiMedio. And uh, I was thinking McClure because we did see McClure scramble out last week and complete a long pass down the sideline to DeAndre Baker. And it was a bit reminiscent of that play last week where he hit the receiver down the sideline. That's all right, Walt. It's uh, 15 minutes into the game yet, and I, I haven't uh, called Lofton Thompson by the wrong name yet. Dennis Cliggett around the left side. First down and more. Finally knocked out of bounds. Picks up about 20 yards on the play. Let's see where they spot it. It looks like he stepped out of bounds at about the 32-yard line before he was actually shoved out of bounds. So let's call it 17 yards on the carry. And the one thing that Central Bucks West, not every year, uh, well, they won't show you every year, is a guy who's got that kind of speed. And when you have that sort of versatility, if you get a small team, they can run Armstrong. Tonight, they're against a small Narstown team, they're really running Cliggett well. Uh, that's what makes them so tough to stop, is that they can throw a lot of things at you and obviously can go up in the air with Blomgren as well. Blomgren looks to pass. Little play action. He's got men out front. He's got a man open. The pass is up. Touchdown! Boy, I'll tell you, Travis Blomgren, what a great job. Let's give the credit all the way around. Super job by the line, plenty of protection. The receiver that time, Clicker Fabian. Great football name, Clicker for the touchdown. So a 32-yard strike from Blomgren to Fabian. Frankie Avalon was open, but he saw Fabian in the end zone, so he went to him. Yeah, well, there, there's a lot of room out there now, and, and that's why you're going to go to the air, to, to spread it out a little bit. And now watch that running game go to work and with Narstown knowing that they can be beaten deep. Patterson in to attempt his third extra point of the ball game. Good snap. Low kick, but high enough. It's good. 21 to nothing. 7.58. Still to go in the first half. It's a timeout on the field, and the Eagles will once again try and regroup. But I tell you, what an impressive offense for this uh, this Buck squad. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're just running it down the Eagles' throats, but yet they go upstairs like that. Blomberg, a little play action. He had two big guys out in front of him. There was no Eagle near him. He just laid it into Clicker's, Clicker Fabian's hands. And the motto for that touchdown drive, it's quicker with Clicker. That time only two plays. 17 <laughs> yards left to click it. 32 yards, Clicker Fabian into the corner of the end zone. Blomgren with plenty of time and plenty of protection on the rollout. 22 seconds, and the Bucks go up 21 to nothing. Oh, man. Well, folks, sometimes you have games like this. And you have a, a super squad out there for the Bucks. And let's face it, the Eagles play in, in, in the toughest division in high school football in the state of Pennsylvania. And when you've got a, a tough year, um, it's magnified a thousand times. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you drop off at all in talent level, uh, there, there, are, there are a lot of teams back there waiting to bite you and a lot of teams up top who are just waiting to beat on you. Uh, and and that's, what, that's what makes it such a, an impossibly difficult conference. Um, but it challenges you, and it, it, it keeps you up, and it challenges you to want to wanna have a really good program because you know you have to, uh, or else on some nights like this, you're going to come out and be embarrassed. My only question now is, how did Pensbury keep him to 30? <laughs> Patterson to kick. The Eagles three back. Again, they kick deep. This time it's taken by Desmond Wright at about the 10-yard line. He brings it straight up the middle, brings it back to about the 26-yard line where he's dropped. So the Eagles will have first and 10 from their own 26. What do they feed those boys out in Doylestown? I mean, look at these kids. These guys are huge. It's like looking at an NFL team out there. Yeah, they, they, have, they have a lot of size, and, and when it's that obvious, just by sight, um, you know that there, there's a huge advantage to that team that's towering over the other. The Eagles first and 10. Will Gant comes in motion. It's a new set. The pitch, Gant out front, the block for Thompson, and there it worked. Lofton 
Good run that time. The best offensive play of the game for Norristown. They pick up 14 yards, and they put Will Gann out in front to block for his backfield mate, Lofton Thompson. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's a real efficient play, a real, real nice, clean play. You bring Gann across. As we said, Gant's more the fullback type. So you bring him across for Thompson, and you get Thompson to the outside where he can work a little bit by giving him the lateral pitch right across the line. And instead of just pounding him into that line and making him take more of a beating than, than necessary, uh, you pitch out to him and let him swing a little bit. Now maybe you incorporate a little bit of short passing in, and that'll open up the middle a little bit for your running game. Eagles first and 10 from their own 40-yard line. Same set. Gant comes. Thompson follows. And he's going to get about five yards on the play. Well, that's what we saw last year from Lofton Thompson, whereas Damon Carroll was, was the slasher and would burst through holes. Uh, Lofton Thompson just picks his way along. And you never really see him take off and, and shoot through any holes, but he picks his way, picks his way, and before you know it, he's got six, seven yards. Uh, and that's how he ground out so many yards and had a huge yards per carry average because he just didn't lose yards once he got going forward. It often reminds me a little bit of Ricky Waters, uh, where he, he starts to look for the hole. He, he doesn't uh, dart to it and, and cut through and slash through like you said, but he, he waits his time. Yeah, he's a little more of a glider as opposed to, to the high-stepping style of a Ricky Waters, but you're right, he's definitely a north-south, and there, there's very little uh, lateral movement sideline to sideline. The quick handoff to Kelly. Kelly stopped up but keeps the feet moving and actually surges forward for a yard or two. I thought that was stopped behind the line of scrimmage. James Kelly managed to eke out a yard. It's going to bring up third down for the Eagles, though. We've got an official's timeout. Player down on the field. Looks like one of the Bucks who was at the bottom of the pile there. So with a 6.08 to play in the half, and the Eagles down by 21 points, they'll face third down and four from their own 46-yard line. And as soon as we can get you a number on that Bucks player, we will. And Coach Roger Grove is really trying to keep his troops fresh. He's rotating number 61, Greg Delucia, in there at offensive line to try and keep some of those offensive linemen fresh as Narstown's beginning to move the ball a little bit. Well, there's a good crowd here tonight at Roosevelt Field. A few more folks than we saw for that rain-delayed event uh, against Abington last week. And certainly not bad for a Thursday night game. No, it, it's not something you put it on your schedule at the beginning of the year, a Thursday night game. Uh, but when you see it's Central Bucks West, uh, you make some exceptions. And, and they have a decent crowd across the way as well. Number 42, Chris McNutt, leaving the field under his own power. Just dazed a little bit, I'm guessing. He looks to be okay. So the Eagles have a little extra time to do some play calling here. Frank DiMedio, number five, your Eagle quarterback. They bring everybody in tight. DiMedio still talking to DeAndre Baker and Will Gant. Well, the Eagles had a lot of time, and they still don't know where to set up here. Now Gant comes in motion to the near side. Oh, this time they go off the right side. Thompson breaks to the secondary. Wow, I'll tell you, he did it all on his own. It looked like for me, Walt, there might have been a hole over there on that right side. Lofton Thompson, uh, the Eagles, after going successfully off the left side with Will Gant leading, show that formation. Thompson goes right, looked like he was stopped and darted through for the first down. And, and you wonder where it changes. Uh, Lofton Thompson was held up there, and in the first quarter, he's going down right there. And you wonder if, if the Bucks are maybe getting a little bit worn out and Nar or Narstown has just decided uh, to try and take that step up right now. They think they know that this is the time they have to do something. They absolutely can't go in to the locker room, 21 down at the half. First and 10 Eagles from the Bucks 40. They go play action. The lefty Demedio across the middle, and I tell you, it was a fine pass. Put it right into the hands of tight end Josiah Perry. Perry just had it bounce off the pads. Yeah, and I, that's North, only the second time Northtown's going to the air tonight, uh, and I know it's tough to keep sharp when you're not getting a lot of repetitions, and it's not something that Northtown probably focuses on, but the ball has to be caught. Demedio really delivered that well. And there's a man right on Josiah Perry, but he had a step on him. And there was a guy right behind him. So Demedio had to be perfect with it, and he was. Uh, and Perry just, just let it slip out of his hands. 
So it'll be second and 10 for the Eagles once again from the Bucks 40 yard line. The time just under five minutes to play here in the first half. The score 21 to nothing. The Bucks up on top of the host Eagles. This time they go with Gant wide to the right, Baker to the bottom of your screen. And again, the play action, DiMedio rolls left, throws deep, intercepted by Travis Blomgren. at seven points again, unless Thompson can stop him. And there's not a chance of that. Travis Blomgren just came up from his safety position, ripped that ball out of the air. Well, let's call it 70 yards on the interception and the touchdown return. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you, when it ain't going your way, it ain't going your way. Well, he was waiting for that, and Demedio was looking over there the whole time. Uh, obviously more comfortable throwing to his left as he is a left-hander, uh, and, and Blanker was just waiting on it. And without, uh, without a, a John Elway-like arm strength, you can't look at a man for that long and have a D-back like Travis Blomgren not read that all the way. Blomgren got a great break on the ball uh, and caught it uh, in full stride, and nobody was going to catch him. Blomgren may be the fastest man out on that field with those 22 out there right now. Uh, and if you ask Travis Blomgren, he'll tell you he loves to play defensive back much more than he needs, loves to play quarterback. And if Travis Blomgren's going to do anything at the next level of football, it's going to be a D-back. The extra point attempt is good. Patterson four for four tonight. It's now 28 to nothing. And folks, we still have an entire half of football to play. Walt, I can't remember the last time I saw a Norristown team manhandled the way they're being manhandled tonight. No, not, not even against a team as, as deeply talented as the Bucks. Uh, Norristown's always had enough to, to stay in there. And with the added, added dimension of the rivalry, make it a heated game. Uh, this one, it's really just a mismatch. It's just a mismatch, and I, and I think that's playing out right now. But, Jeff, we still track it. Six plays, three plays, two plays. That one, offense doesn't even have to step on the field. Travis Blomgren takes care of it. 70-yard interception return with 4.42 left to put the Bucks up 28-0. And again, while we have a lull in the game, we've uh, certainly had a, a fair number of uh, stoppages for the, uh, the exchange of, uh, of the ball. <laughs> we again want to thank the Norristown Area School District for bringing you this ball game on their cable access channel. Mr. Tony Coya, the Director of Communications, our producer. Mr. Sam Galbraith, who is directing tonight's show, ably assisted by our cameraman, Garrett Hickman and Matt McGran. We also want to thank Greg Fry for taking care of our statistics tonight. Once again, I'm Jeff Brandon along with Walt Fry. And folks, uh, you're seeing a football clinic put on by the Bucks tonight. And this is a team, this Bucks team, that's really, really prepared to do something in the, in the state playoffs this year. That's Patterson, a blast. Oh, kicks that ball to the three yard line. Thompson has to go back, can't pick it cleanly. Picks his way through, breaks three tackles, turns to the outside, and he is ripped to the ground by number 89, White. And I'll tell you, great job that time by Lofton. That ball was kicked so deep, I don't think even he could believe it. He finally picked it at about the two, three yard line. Did a great job getting it back to where he did. And you know, Jeff, he, uh, he, he doesn't have the blazing, blazing speed that's just gonna uh, dazzle you, but he's got enough speed and he just doesn't have it right now with that bad leg. Uh, that time, White, who's a who's a 6'3 defensive tackle, ran him down, and that's not going to happen. As talented as White is, uh, that's not going to happen in a normal situation. But Lawson Thompson just, just doesn't have the explosion, and he's, he's really gutting it out, and, and he's still being the man for Narstown and still trying to make the plays on defense. So uh, really just a gutsy effort, uh, but, but it's really limited Narstown and what they can do. The Eagles take over on their own 28-yard line. Demedia with a quick pitch to Gant. They go off the left side. Gant turns the corner. He's grabbed by the jersey and dragged down. But a good job that time by Will Gant. On the outside, it looked like it was Corey Banning, the uh, the tackler who had Will Gant by the jersey and just held on for dear life. Yeah, well, finally, Narstown got a size advantage there. It was the 185-pound uh, cornerback Banning who was hanging on for dear life, as you said, on the 200-pound Gant's jersey. Uh, and Gant nicely turned the corner that time. I thought he was going to be stopped there, but he nicely turned the corner, and once he got going forward, all Banning could do was hold on and let his weight drag 
Gantt down. So that was a nine yard carry for Gantt, second and one from the Eagle 36. Demedio goes to Thompson. They go to the short side. It's gonna be close to a first down, but I'm not quite sure they got there. The Bucks came up nicely that time, four tacklers in there. In addition to Banning, McNutt in on the tackle, number 33 for the Bucks. Paul Picciotti also there. And right now there are a lot of all Norristown offensive linemen following the play, and uh, that's a sign that they're really not holding the West defenders up at all. The officials call time. They're going to bring the chains all the way across the field and take a measurement. Three twenty-one here to play in this first half. Well, Narstan came up just a little bit short on that one, so they'll have a third and short to grind out for the first down and try and keep their drive going. Well, Jeff, it'll be interesting to see if Narscan can anything can get anything going here. Uh, how they're going to come out in the second half? I mean, obviously they they have the freedom right now to to try to and do a few things. I don't know if there's anything that they're they're holding back from their offense, or that there's anything that uh, that they can improve on, or or, or uh, try something different. Uh, but this would be the game they have a little bit of freedom to do it, as they may be maybe behind the eight ball in the Suburban One Conference, but certainly a long season ahead. Looks like on the keeper that time, Demedio surges forward and he's got the first down very easily. Picks up two yards on the play and that's a nice, uh, nice charge ahead that time by the interior line for the Eagles. And that's nice to build a little confidence. It, it seems like nothing as it's only less than a yard, uh, but with the way it's been going tonight, it's a, a little bit of a confidence builder when you can grind out that first down with a straight power game. So the Eagles put up another first down here. They've got the ball at their 38-yard line. Zitzer and Baker are wide. They go on the quick handoff to Kelly, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. There's a flag down on the far side of the field. And again, uh, that type of call, you'd think it's either uh, motion or holding. It's a quick call. And that's what it is, Walt, a legal procedure called against the Eagles. It was the judge on the far side of the field who flew, threw the flag. So that'll knock Narstown back five yards. No, I stand corrected. Mike Petton says, well, I stopped you guys. I'll take the loss of down. There was no gain on the play, so rather than move the Eagles back five yards, he elects to uh, accept that last play, which was a good defensive play by his squad and make it second and 10 rather than first and 15. Yeah, and he could be thinking about trying to get this ball back as well. West has uh, two of their timeouts still remaining if they'd want to put any more points on the board here. We're winding down to two minutes, uh, but they could wind up with good field position if they could stop Norristown from another first down. Demedio, straight drop over the middle, has Josiah Perry open. It was a nice pass. Perry uh, tried to one hand it there. Had a chance at it, and he knows it, but it was a tough ball to catch. Well, it was, it was a tough ball to catch, but one that maybe could have uh, could have been caught with two hands. But uh, you can't fault the Medio because if he throws that any lower, it's picked or, or at the very least deflected. Um, so uh, maybe a play that, that just wasn't meant to be, but the Medio couldn't have really put that anywhere else than where he put it. Interesting to see a left-handed quarterback, not something you see very often, uh, although... Uh, We've seen him in the past here for Norristown. <laughs> Demedio will uh, line up on third and 10 now. 2.06 to play in the half. Looks over the middle, got Zitzer open, first down. Well, I'll tell you, a heck of a catch by Jimmy Zitzer. Picks up nearly 20 yards on the play. Yeah, that time Zitzer w w was cutting across to the left 
And Demedio, seeing a guy right where Zitzer was going, had to put a little bit behind him. Great body control by Zitzer to turn uh, and a tough position to jump from, but got up just high enough to squeeze that ball. And so far, Demedio has shown good arm strength going over the middle. Uh, it's, it's been a little bit weaker going to the outside and, and out to the, the sideline. But going over the middle, Demedio showed some pretty good accuracy and a lot of arm strength. Let's call it 20 yards on that last play. It's first and 10. There's the blitz. Demedio somehow gets it away. And that's going to be, uh, well, no flag, incomplete pass. Yeah, I think Kelly was close enough to allow them to, to say that he maybe was throwing to Kelly. Uh, but CB West really zoned in on the passing game that time. Uh, and that's the, the trap you run into as you're trying to move the ball down the field. And Narstown had thrown two straight times. And West was counting on a third. And they came full out with the blitz straight up the middle that time. And they read it well. It's a good thing Brian Webster, the center, didn't catch that ball. <laughs> he was the closest guy to it. That's why I thought we might see a grounding call. Uh, Demedio able to get it away. It's going to be second and 10 from the Bucks' 41-yard line. The pitch goes to Thompson. Blocker out front, tries to cut inside. He does. Al Zone put a block out there. Lofton Thompson uh, wasn't quite there yet, though, and not able to take advantage of that lead block. Yeah, well, Zone got one guy. Problem is there were two out there, and uh, Thompson was forced to take on the second one by himself uh, and managed to get by him. But West doing a good job of holding on to jerseys when Narstown players get by them tonight and managed to drag Thompson down. Eagles pick up five yards on the play. There's a timeout on the field with 48 seconds remaining in the half. Roger Grove uses a timeout. If the Eagles are to get any points on the board, they certainly need to try and get the ball into the end zone right here. The ball's at the 36 yard line. They need to get to the 31 for a first down here on third down. At this stage of the game, down 28 to nothing, I'd certainly say they have two downs to get it. You certainly don't want to punt the ball away here. I think they're looking at two downs at least until they, or four down territory really, at least until they get into field goal territory. Uh, you may say, well, you're down this far. You know, why kick the field goal? But uh, maybe something mean something just to put some points on the board and they probably have to get to just outside the 20 yard line to get into good range for Albie Morano. It's good to see the Eagles put together a few first downs though. Uh, the way this game had been going it was it was darn near demoralizing and for them to at least get their offense in some kind of a sink is good to see. Well, they really, really did even hit their stride against Abington last week. Just a couple of big plays, and actually a couple of big plays against Westchester Henderson accounted for all their points. You had a, a over 60-yard return by DeAndre Baker for a touchdown, and then an over 60-yard pass to De DeAndre Baker for a touchdown. Uh, so as you said, Jeff, they need to get him involved. Obviously, he's their playmaker, and obviously they're going to have to do things in huge chunks of yardage this year with the offense that they have. So Roger Grove comes off the field after chatting with his offense. Zitzer now at the bottom of your screen. Baker wide to the right. The backs are split. Demedio, quick count. They pitch to Thompson, halfback option, and he is buried. Boy, I'll tell you, that's an incomplete pass. And Dave Armstrong already had his arms wrapped around Lofton by the time he got that ball into the air. Yeah, well, on that play, when you, when you pitch the ball, uh, you really have to get your running back out wide. They they pitched and West just played it like a sweep, and they just came hard at Thompson, uh, and that really gave him no time to get out there and set up to throw the ball. And the last thing you want to do is throw when you're off balance because that could lead to another turnover, and with nobody out there, possibly another touchdown for the Bucks. Um, so you really have to be careful in that play. That's why a lot of times you'll see him split out a guy wide and throw it to him out there. That time the pitch just didn't get Thompson far enough outside to have enough time to throw the ball. So we have fourth and five for the Eagles. Once again, Zitzer and Baker are split. Thompson and Kelly in the backfield. Little confusion there, but they set. Demedio steps up over the middle to Zitzer. Jimmy Zitzer has it, hit him in the hands. Ball is a little bit low, but that ball was certainly catchable. Again, you can't fault Frank Demedio. Zitzer cutting in from the left sideline, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. The Bucks will take over with 33 seconds remaining in the half. Yeah, the media has gone to the air eight times tonight, and uh, probably he's one for eight, but probably three others should have been caught. 
Uh, and, and obviously you have to execute perfectly to even stay in a game with the Bucks, let alone beat them. Uh, and Narstown's dropped now three passes that were probably catchable. Um, and, you know, you don't know what kind of effect it has being down 28 nothing already. I'm sure it, uh, it's really demoralizing at this point to be beaten up like that. Uh, and you lose your concentration a little bit. And also, I think Sister was, was, was really trying to do something there. He was cutting across the middle, and that leads to some big runs after the catch. Uh, I think he was looking that way. Wow, Blomgren goes up top. The coverage is there, broken up nicely. That was Fabian again out deep. And on the coverage, number seven, Donald Vaughn. Good coverage that time. Yeah, Vaughn had that read all the way, and Vaughn was in better position than Fabian was to catch that ball. Boy, I'll tell you, Mike Petten uh, not sparing the rod here. He's up 28 to nothing, 33 seconds to go in the half, and he goes deep on the first play from scrimmage on this series. Yeah, well, I think that clears up why he declined the penalty down deep in Narstown territory. He's obviously looking to get the ball back, and Narstown might have saved themselves being down even more just by putting together those few first downs. So not insignificant, uh, but we're certainly seeing some, some creative offense with four guys wide, and nobody out here for Narstown to cover. The quick pass. They set it up down the sideline. Ra Ra Lusain knocks the receiver out of bounds. That's number 44 for the Bucks. Leo Schultz. Boy, that was quite a set. <laughs> two players left, two players right. <laughs> yeah, and something that Narsan couldn't have been prepared for there. And uh, good thing Lusain was alert enough just to shoot out from his end position to get Schultz and knock him out of bounds. What that play does it do is guarantee that you're going to get out of bounds while picking up some pretty good yardage. So good play at the time. But uh, the Bucks are going full, full, full bear right here, going for points. 18 seconds to play in the half. Blomgren, nice pass. Nice touch pass, completed to Cliggett. Cliggett out of bounds at the 20 with nine seconds to play here in the half. Yeah, and that time it looked like uh, there's a little mix-up in the zone there. Zitzer had the short coverage, but you wonder why anybody's got the short coverage on a, on a, at, with a time as it is. There are 18 seconds left, and if you can limit them to some short plays, uh, they're not going to get any points, but that time he settled into the zone there with uh, Stewart and, and Thompson playing way, way back deep, 40 yards off the line of scrimmage. Zitzer 10 yards off, and the receiver just settled down 25 yards from line of scrimmage. So, uh, uh, yeah, Narstown really didn't play that one too cleanly, and now the Bucks are calling their final timeout just to make sure here. Boy, I'll tell you, nine seconds. You figure they've got two <laughs> shots at the end zone. They lead 28 to nothing. Mike Petton's going to call time and talk it over. They've got the ball at their own, at the Eagle, rather, 23-yard line. I didn't like the fact that Abington uh, was uh, was going for the end zone when they were up 20 to 10 at the very end of that game last week. Yeah, it, it uh, it's a it's a pretty nasty sign here in Suburban One. I don't know if it's uh, something against Norristown, and uh, if there is, I don't know why there would be, uh, or if it's just the trend. Maybe it's just the way things are going. But certainly, uh, Abington tried to pour it on at the end. And we questioned that, but their final play of that game really really solidified that notion that they were trying to put some points on the board. Uh, and now Central Bucks West, I mean, uh, it's it's put away. Uh, I mean, we're not going out on a limb to say that right now. It's put away oh, at 28 agree. nothing, um, And they're, they're definitely trying to put another touchdown on right here. So. Could it be playoff points uh, or uh, playoff tiebreakers? You know, points scored against... Uh division opponents? Yeah, that's a, th that is one of the tiebreakers, but th that's pretty far down the list. I, I guess it's something to consider, um, and that's really the, <laughs> the only thing that you could even understand at this point. That could be the only justifiable reason. Again, they set four wide receivers into the formation. Keep Armstrong back to block. Eagles blitz. Blomgren gets it up. Man open. Touchdown. There's a flag down. Let's wait and see what the penalty is. I tend to believe the penalty's against the defense, but let's wait and see. We'll wait for the call here. In that area, it's probably going to be some something of a, uh, well, I would think it would be a, I would think it would be a defensive hold on the Eagles, but they're gonna bring that one back. So it was against West, probably a, an offensive interference right in that area. They're saying up here in the press box, Walt, I'm overhearing, looks like an eligible man downfield. That would make sense from that spot, too, because the official that called it was uh, was down on the near sideline, and that's the call. So somebody broke off of that line there. They, uh, the Eagles were, were coming hard at Blomgren, 
There's only a second to play here in the half. Nicely completed, 23-yard pass. He had guys right in his face. I don't. Did you catch who the receiver was? I thought it was uh, Fabian again. I believe it was number 10 down in the corner yeah, there. Yeah, he's the man they like down in the corner. And uh, well, it shows you how how different it is. Just a different a look it is for Norristown to see, uh, with four men spread out wide. And obviously, West. It's not something that they work on a lot either. Yeah, well, that saved Narstown some points right there because uh, with four guys out, Narstown only had three guys back deep. It's rare that you see a team be completely outmanned back there in the secondary, but uh, East West had, excuse me, West had guys wide open everywhere. And Blomgren again showing his poise and ability to deliver to deliver the ball. That was a well-thrown ball under pressure. They're going to get one more shot at it with one second to play before the half. The Eagles down 28 to nothing. They're going to take another crack at the end zone, this time from 28 yards out. So that ineligible man downfield cost the Bucks six points. They again send three receivers into the formation, two backs left. Armstrong stays the block. Lusane puts pressure on. The pass is up. Touchdown. Dennis Cliggett catches the ball for six points. And I tell you what, one second to go before the half. And Blomgren just dropped a beauty in there. Dennis Klig at a super sliding catch. Six points, and Patterson will attempt his fifth extra point. And that time to get a, an extra man out, Norristown dropped Will Gant off the line, and Gant was the man in coverage there. De Dennis Klig is going to beat Will Gant every time, and that is no knock on Will Gant. Will Gant's playing nose tackle for the Eagles, and Dennis Klig is a star running back for the Central Bucks West Bucks. Uh, Gann had, had as good a coverage as you can expect right there, and with the defensive back coming over, just got there late. Uh, you would hope that they would read that quicker, but a good play by the Bucks. The extra point attempt is good. It's 35 to zero. The first half is over, thank goodness. I shudder to think what the next 24 minutes might bring if that's the, uh, the way the Bucks decide to play the rest of this game. Well, folks, Walt and I will be back in just a moment. Not a lot of highlights for Norristown, but certainly a lot of scoring to recap, although it's all on one side of the ledger sheet. We'll be back in just a moment. Okay, folks, at the half, once again, 35 points up on the board by the Central Bucks West Bucks. They gotta come up with a better nickname. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? The yeah, Central yeah. Bucks West Bucks. Bucks West Bucks. Bucks West. <laughs> it's like Bucks. the Norristown Norrises, you know? I mean, come on, let's go here. Philadelphia Phillies. Does that <laughs> ring a bell? Yeah. Well, that, okay, fine. That's a fine example, uh, folks. Let's. Uh, we'll try uh, as best we can to recap this scoring for you. Uh, at least the, the drives weren't long and drawn out and tedious. I mean, they're pretty <laughs> quick. Yeah, not at all. It was uh, two minutes, 12 seconds was the first CB West drive. That went six plays, 55 yards, resulted in a touchdown run of five yards by Dennis Cliggett. Their next drive was three play drive. That one under a minute, that was 71 yards. That was capped off by a 55 yard touchdown run by Dennis Cliggett. Dennis Cliggett, in all in all, 10 carries, 151 yards, and those two TDs in that first half alone. Not a bad half of football. <laughs> no, that's pretty, much, that's pretty much a game, but he only, had, only needed 10 carries to do it. Bucks, of course, three more touchdowns on the board. 32-yard drive that ended with a six-yard touchdown pass. And the big play, a 23-yard touchdown pass from Travis Blomgren to Clicker Fabian. Clicker Fabian. As I struggle through these touchdown drives. And then the final one went 63 yards, and that was Blomgren to Cliggett with a passing play to end that drive at the very last play of the first half. Made it 35 to nothing and put Narstown way in a hole to start the second half. Well, at some place we missed that 70 yard uh, pass return interception for a touchdown by Travis Blomgren. Yeah, that was so the one of those one. one of those touchdowns was, uh, was that one. There's the kickoff, folks. The bad news is the Bucks get the ball first. Narstown kicks off, taken up the left sideline. That could be a touchdown. Nope. They drag him down at the Norristown 35, and I'll tell you, when it rains, it pours. This is absolutely unbelievable, folks. And Jeff, I think you're, you're uh, starting to anticipate a little much there. 
<laughs> As he was trapped in on the sideline, but certainly didn't need to do much. Just took straight up off the straight, just took off straight up the sideline. Well, really, Walt, when you're talking in hypotheticals, any time they snap the ball, it could be it a touchdown. It could be a touchdown. <laughs> There's always that chance. Well, this is not what Narsdale needed, certainly. The Bucks have the ball first and 10 from the Eagle 35-yard line. Blomgren hands off the left side. There's Cliggett again around the outside, 15 yards, 18 yards, 20 yards. Well, he just uh, improved his average. He was only getting 15.1 yards a carry. Now he's got that up a little bit. Yeah, he's well on his way to 200 and uh, really going to have some huge numbers by the time this one's over. Of course, that's a first down. Line of scrimmage now, the Eagle 14-yard line. If you're Mike Pett, at one point, do you take the first team out? I mean, do you risk injury in a game where you've got it locked away with uh, almost a half a football to play? Well, I think that's what you're seeing right now. I think he's uh, he's going to go for this the one more score, and then I think you'll start to see some guys coming out. Armstrong bulls his way off the left side, stops short of the goal line, but I believe it's going to be another first down. And there's a guy who's fresh. He only had two carries in that first uh, first half. And they only went for 10 yards, so Armstrong improving his average as well, but he's he's fresh and ready to go, and that's pretty scary when you got a 255 pound guy who's coming at you and <laughs> hasn't even had any work tonight. That was good for 11 yards and a first down. First and goal from the three yard line. So it will be a touchdown left or a touchdown right. Oh, see? The Norristown defense heard me and said, here, take that. We're going to stop this guy. You know why? Because they went right up the middle. That's I said right. left or right, and they, uh, they, they didn't heed my call. They tried to take it right down the middle, and the Eagles stopped if there's a player down on the field. And yeah, that's the player down is the one who made that tackle down low. Uh, so he paid the price for that fabulous stop right there. Try and get you a number here and a name just momentarily. It'll be second and goal, about a yard on that carry. Second and goal from the two. That's number 54, Ra Ra Lusain, defensive and offensive lineman for the Eagles. And he's up under his own power, limping a little bit, but Ra Ra looks to be okay, and that's certainly good to see. Gets a nice round of applause from the fans here at Roosevelt Field. You know, Jeff, the question on the other side of when does Mike Petten remove his starters is when does Roger Grove remove some of his starters? And these guys are really, really banged up. And Arstan only had the short week to go uh, and prepare for this game. Now they have eight more days to prepare for to go out to meet the Ben Salem Owls, but... Uh, at what point does, does Roger Grove give some of his banged up troops a rest? This time Armstrong off the left side. Looked to me like a touchdown, but I don't see any indication of such. I think maybe the ref's arms are tired and he can't lift them anymore. <laughs> I mean, did you see any of those officials signal a touchdown? And it obviously was. Uh, it was certainly very anticlimactic, and Armstrong tossed it away as if he knew he was in. Uh, but they're spotting it up for the extra point, so. I've never seen a whole set of officials fail to signal a touchdown. <laughs> that's just, that's mind boggling. I mean, it was obviously six points. They're lining up for the extra point. And if it was so obvious, the question is then, why do they need to call it to you for you, Jeff? Well, geez, now we have the second string kicker who just put that ball out of the field, put it out by the buses on that extra point yeah, attempt. Yeah, Bill Stone's been resting up over there and uh, that left leg of his was certainly nice and fresh to blast that one out. Well, that was Armstrong, folks, on the two-yard carry. It looked like a touchdown, and obviously it was a touchdown, but nobody wanted to say it was a touchdown. Maybe it was like a, you know, you don't want to embarrass Narstown by putting those, throwing those arms up into the air. It's already 35. You really don't want to say it's 41. In any event, 42 to nothing. We don't mean to make light of this, folks. I mean, this is a tough night for the Narstown Eagles. Uh, obviously, the toughest night of football they've had in a long, long time. And uh, I think it's going to be quite a task for Roger Grove and his assistant coaches to marshal the forces here and, and get these guys ready for their next game. Uh, I think, fortunately, Ben Salem, not a very strong team, uh, traditionally and, and apparently not this year either. 
so the Eagles hopefully get a little bit of a breather next week and can get back to uh, the winning ways with a victory over Ben Salem. If they run into Ben Salem and the Chamonix, they're, they're going to be right back to 2-2, two and two, hopefully. This is still a, a pretty talented team. Uh, unfortunately, again, the one thing you cannot say about them is that they are deep, uh, and any kind of injuries are, are going to hurt them, and it's just going to limit what they can do just because of the, the lack of I guess a lack of depth that they have, uh, but they can easily get them. Well, not easily, but they can get themselves back to two and two with some hard work in the next two weeks. Uh, and those are two of the top teams that they played: Abington and obviously Central Bucks West right here. James Kelly takes the kickoff at the 24-yard line, takes it up the middle, and he stopped at about the 34, perhaps the 35. So again, the uh, the Bucks going back to kicking to the up man, and that time it was. Uh, looks like number 12, Dan Patterson. Is that right, Walt? Yeah, that was Dan Patterson. He's walking off the field right now, so he was the one who put that one down to James Kelly. So the Eagles will load it up again here. Frank DiMedio, your quarterback, number five. DeAndre Baker's the wideout down at the bottom of your screen. Three men set in the backfield. They go to Lofton Thompson, little misdirection. Nice tackle that time. Number 52, Nick Krugnally in on the tackle. And Walt, this is not a good thing. It looks like the substitutions have taken place. We're in deep trouble. <laughs> it takes me half a game to get to know who's out there, and now they've, they've switched all those guys. And the only thing we can hope for is that the roster's right, so we can, we can pick these guys right off. As they're not the names we're used to calling. But yeah, it looks like uh, Central Bucks West has made wholesale substitutions in their defensive 11. Whereas Narstown's still going with the starters to try and put some points on the board. Loss of a yard, second and 11. Again with the misdirection, Will Gant finds some open territory. Cuts to the outside, first down for Gant. Picks up the 11 plus two more. Let's call it a 13 yard carry for Will Gant in a Narstown first down. And he is a rumbler and all he needs is, is a nice hole to get through. And then he's a load to bring down. He's so low to the ground and at 200 pounds. Uh, lower than most of the guys he's going to run up against, or if he's not lower, he's going to be bigger. So Will Gant, his first long run we've really seen him have in these two games. Demedio, the quick handoff up the middle to Kelly. Kelly picks his way nicely, picks up about six or seven before he's brought down in the secondary. And obviously now there are going to be some holes to open up as uh, Central Bucks West line that's out there now is a little bit smaller than the one that they put out for, to start the game. It looks like Kelly down on the ground, Walt. Um, yeah, well, you hope it's not serious. He was, he was held up there as he tried to struggle for some extra yardage, and he had a, a few guys coming from each side of him to try and bring him down as he was struggling for that extra yard, and you just hope that nothing got twisted under him. That's what it appeared to me, that he was bent back a little bit on that tackle. We're going to call it six yards on the play, make it second and four. The Eagles are now into Bucks territory. Ball at the 47-yard line of the Bucks. Well, I guess we know the number now. It's 42 points. Once you have 42, then that's enough. When you're ahead 42 to nothing, you can substitute. Yeah, I think it was the situation. Uh, that I think he really just wanted to get that one more in that second half. Uh, just to just to keep his starters in and and uh, get them a little more work, so they didn't just have to come out and sit right on the bench. Um, and I think he probably discussed that that if there was one more touchdown, then telling his other guys to be ready to play. And Kelly's walking off now, and he he has he has a slight limp, so it does look like it was something down in the legs. Uh, so there's another injury that Narstown can ill afford. As James Kelly's a star going both ways, they really need him. And if we were live, I wouldn't mention, but since we're tape delayed, I can tell you that Jeff is now flashing me the cash that he won from the Narstown 50-50 lottery. So at least something good coming of this night as Mr. Brandon lines his pockets. <laughs> Lofton Thompson stacked up for a loss on that play. Nothing doing up the middle that time. Well, Walt, I figure for all those $2 contributions I've made over the last 15 years, I'm probably about even. <laughs> mm. 
you know, in the old days, you know, at least we used to say we'd, we'd get a free pizza for doing these games, you know, and... Uh, and, uh, it was older days than me. I never got pizza. It, it, well, it never really happened. At least we talked about it. Okay. You know, we tried to throw a little guilt at Tony Koya, but uh, it never really seemed to bother him much. <laughs> Loss of a yard on that play makes it third and five. Demedio rolls left. He looks. He's got time. Brings it in. And he is walloped at the line of scrimmage. Fourth down, Narstown. You know, Demetrius' choices there, try to run through five guys or try to throw through five guys. And he took the noble and probably the wise decision, not physically for him, but for the team, as he really didn't have a sight line to his receiver that time. So down by 42 with 7.02 to play in the third quarter. The Eagles will set up to punt. Will Gant doing the duty. Demedio looking to the sidelines, and Norristown's going to have to call timeout. Obvious confusion out there. Um, Demedio brings the plays in from the sideline. He is also out there while the kicking unit is on, and they were all looking plaintively at the sideline, asking Roger what they should be doing and had to utilize the timeout. Yeah, and, and, and this, is, this seems to be the difference this year, um, is that there really seems to be a lot of confusion in these past two games, and, and it comes on fourth down sets and a lot of special teams plays. Last week we saw Abington run a trick play where Narstown just was not prepared for it. Uh, and that seems to be the difference from past years is that there's a, there's a lot of confusion out there early this season, uh, and that's a, a real quick way to put yourself in a hole in as tough a conference as this. Well, it looks like about half this crowd has departed here, too. Uh, again, this can, can be a huge game in, in any given season for both of these teams, but tonight, obviously, the Bucks simply the much better team, and they have demonstrated that quite clearly. Yeah, it's amazing the difference a year makes. I mean, we went up to War Memorial last year for the Bucks and the Eagles, uh, and that place was just jammed. We were, we were shoulder to shoulder and, and just people on top of each other for... Uh, what was a tight game for most of the way. The Bucks really did dominate, but there was always that hope. Uh, and tonight, just from the get-go, there, there was really never that hope that the Eagles would pull this one out. Good snap. Gant has plenty of time. Gets off a nice kick. Rather short. It's going to hit at about the 25-yard line. It'll be downed by number 24 for the Eagle coverage squad. That's Dan Milligan at the Bucks' 23-yard line. All I can hope is that uh, Roger Grove keeps his starters in <laughs> for most of this game because I'm sure we've got a whole different squad out there for the Bucks. Let's see if we can at least pick up the position players for you. In at quarterback, number 33, Paul Piccati. The pitch goes left. Covered that time on the outside by number eight, Josiah Purry. Six yards on the carry, second and four. Second and four, the Bucks set up with three backs. This time they go right. Stacked up nicely by the Eagles. Ra Ra Lusain in on the tackle. Again, we'll try and get you these ball carriers, folks. It's not easy to pick out those numbers. Interesting that we have uh, number 33, Picotti, uh, in at quarterback. He's listed as a tight end and a linebacker. Yeah, and I meant. 6 1 senior. And I mentioned earlier how active a linebacker he was. He's he, uh, really is one of their key players on defense. Third and a yard. The pitch goes left. First down, Bucks. Players in the open field. That's number 41, Mario Palena. Look at Palenia. Baker get him. Hawk down. DeAndre Baker shows some pride out there. Races downfield and brings down Palena at the two yard line. 
Boy, give a lot of credit to DeAndre Baker. That's a heads-up play. Polanya only had a yard to pick up there, busted into the secondary, was 10 yards beyond the nearest eagle, and Baker just turned on the Jets and brought him down from behind. So that was number 41, Mario Polanya, with a big run for the Bucks. Sets up first and goal. They're going to mark it at the five-yard line. Picotti hands off the right side. Didn't take long, though. That was number 44, Leo Schultz. Five-yard carry for a touchdown for Leo Schultz. So the Bucks don't waste much time. 4.49 to play in the third quarter. And they are now at 48 to nothing. And at this point, there's not much you can do if you're Mike Pettin. I mean, you can't put your, your second team in there and, ex and expect them not to go all out as they haven't gotten a lot of time tonight. Um, so all you can do is, is sit back and watch as a team so deep as the Bucks come out there with their second team and still put points on the board. Patterson's kick. Ha oh, the Eagles get a break. No good on the extra point attempt. So that'll stall the Bucks at 48 with 4.49 to play in the third quarter. Tell you what, I really like this DeAndre Baker. He's shown us a lot in two games. Uh, obviously, uh, two losing efforts. These two home games here at Roosevelt Field after the uh, the first game win on Labor Day weekend against Westchester Henderson. But I like Baker. He's got a lot of flair and um, nice big burst of speed. Size-wise, he's not a big kid. I mean, uh, you're looking at 5'9", 165. I don't know what kind of size he's going to need to play ball in college if that's what he he wants to do. But he certainly has the quickness. Yeah, well, he's the playmaker, and Narstown every year has one guy. And Lawson Thompson's more of a, he's the star, but he's more of a grinded-out type of running back. Um, DeAndre Baker is the playmaker. Unfortunately, teams aren't kicking to him, and you have to get him the ball on the outside. It's a little tougher for a wide receiver to make the plays than a running back. Patterson's kick is going to be taken on one bounce, we hope, by Lofton Thompson, and he is dropped quickly at about the 22-yard line. The tackler that time, number 25, Chris Ortiz. Yeah, and Baker's real frustrated. Speaking of Baker, uh, I think he was either called off by Thompson or he thinks that he should have taken that one. Uh, and right now, uh, Narstown's just demoralized and they're just really, really confused. It I, looks like nobody really knows what their role is. Uh, you know, we saw two quarterbacks in the first game. We saw McClure last week, and we see Demedio tonight. Um, and I don't want to speculate on that because we really don't know what the reasoning is for, for Demedio being in tonight. So it may be out of necessity, we don't know. But uh, it really looks like nobody's quite sure what their roles are. The handoff up the middle to Will Gant. Nice solid run by Will Gant. He bulls ahead, still up. First down for the Eagles, and Will Gant just takes it right up the gut of the Bucks. Good for about 16 yards. Yeah, and five, five steps and Will Gant's ready to punish somebody. He will not avoid contact. Uh, obviously, he's got a defensive mentality, and this year being pressed into service by the Eagles as a running back. But he will look for contact, uh, and that time he found it and managed to get five yards after it. So a first down for the Eagles. First and ten from their own 39-yard line. DeAndre Baker wide right. New receiver in for the Eagles on the near side is Dan Milligan, number 24. Demedio checking with the official. Got a timeout for an equipment problem. Looks like Will Gant was trying to fix a pad there. Demedio noticed it and alertly asked for a timeout. Eagles will march back to the line of scrimmage here with the clock running. Under four minutes to play in the third quarter. The Bucks up on top, 48 to nothing. Demedio, quick handoff to Gant again into the secondary, one guy, oh, he just ran past him, heads for the far sideline, and he's finally pulled down, but a great run that time by Will Gant. 
setting up, starting at his own 39-yard line and inside the 30 of the Bucks. And obviously, when I said that Will Gant looks for the contact, doesn't mean he'll, he'll always find it because he will, can make people miss. And that time, a nice sidestep picked up 15 more yards afterwards and just had one man who came off the corner to get him or else he was in for the score. It was about a 36-yard carry that time for Gant from his own 39-yard line all the way down to the 24, 25-yard line, let's call it. This time, Lofton Thompson around the right side has good running room. He's close to the stick, and perhaps another eagle first down. You know, Jeff, Lofton Thompson is really fun to watch run. He, he, he's got great balance and r really at all times can go one either way. doesn't matter... Uh, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't necessarily need to be forced to one side. Some guys always like to go to their right or or, uh, or, or definitely straight ahead runners. But often Thompson really keeps his balance well and at all times can shift one way or another. And that's why he picks up the, the couple of extra yards and always has a great yards per carry average. And it was a Norristown first down. First and 10 from the 15-yard line. Pardon me, check that, the 10. Carry goes up the middle. That was Gann on the carry once again. Let's call the original line of scrimmage the 11. I'm sorry, folks, it's tough to pick that up from this angle, even in the press box. Gant picks up nine yards. It's gonna bring up second and one from about the three yard line. Gant off the right side. Looks like close to a touchdown it is. The Eagles are on the board, ladies and gentlemen. 2.24 to play in the third quarter. Will Gant goes over right tackle for a touchdown. And Walt, certainly appropriate that Gant would actually get the points on that drive. He was certainly the dominant player. Yeah, he was a horse. They, they, they just gave him the ball that time and told him to run with it. And uh, the line really did a nice job. That's a starting unit out there. And, and they've been beaten up for a couple of games. But uh, Will Gant really carried the load that time behind a line which was opening up some holes. And the cheerleaders get a chance to warm up their arms a little bit as the plastic football is coming into the stands for the Norristown score. Once again, the officials call time for an equipment problem. Josiah Perry comes off the field. Number nine, junior place kicker Albie Morano is on for the extra point. Well, that might not have been equipment with Josiah Perry. The officials uh, pointing to Perry's neck might be some kind of a neck strain or something. He's twisting his neck around a little bit. I'm not quite sure. Trainer Dennis Flynn taking a look at him right now. In any event, Murano will be on to attempt the extra point. Snap is good. Murano's kick is strong enough. No good. Wide left. And you don't often see that from Albie Murano. So the Eagles give one back. The score now 48 to 6 with 223 remaining in the third quarter. So well, Norristown showing some quick strike capability. That time all on the ground. As they go five plays and 78 yards. The load, of course, being carried by Will Gant on that drive, who's now up to 80 yards on just six carries. So Will Gant going to have some good numbers for the night, despite the score. And Narstown gets on the board to make it 48 to six. Not to diminish that achievement, Walt, but please remember that was against the second string defense for the Bucks. Uh, they did make a wholesale substitution and uh, the Eagles are not facing the Bucks first team any longer. But it is good for the Narstown offensive line to, to work together as a unit Absolutely. and just to, just to see themselves open up some holes. There really haven't been too many holes in the past few games. Um, and just to, just to know that they can open up some holes as a unit because so much of that offensive line play is teamwork and, and, and cohesiveness. So just to let them know that 
hey, they can they can still open up some holes for these backs they got behind them, and to reinforce that these backs that they have behind them can do the job when they have the holes. So Murano will kick off. Murano, a soccer player for the Norristown High varsity soccer squad, does double duty as the place kicker for the Eagles. Strong kick, taking it about the 10 yard line. Ball returner, that's number 41, who had that big carry earlier in this game. Palenia, Mario Palenia. So Central Bucks West has the ball again. This time they'll start the drive at their own 29 yard line, first and 10. And Walt, it looks like uh, Roger Grove has also made his substitutions now that his team is on the board. We have a whole new set of defenders in for the Norristown Eagles. We'll try and get you these players as best we can. Paul Picotti, the quarterback, pitches left, goes to number 25, Chris Ortiz, cuts it back up. He stopped there that time by number 20 for Norristown, Bobby Davis. Bobby Davis. And it was a seven yard pickup for Ortiz, make it second and three from the 36 yard line. Picotti sets the offense, three backs. They go straight up the middle, first down. Almost 10 on the carry, looks like nine yards before the carry was brought down in the secondary and that was that time, looks like number 51, Brian Peretta. Well, this will be good for the Eagles to see what they have. Maybe you never know when a player is going to emerge out of these uh, JV players to, to come up and maybe help your varsity team. The pitch right, this time it's Ortiz, looks to the corner, good gainer. There's a flag, though, in the backfield. Probably going to be a holding call against the Bucks. Ortiz did a good job getting to the outside quickly. He was pushed out of bounds, close to a first down, but that's coming back, folks. There it is, holding against the Bucks. So that negates that nine yard run. They'll back it up 10 yards further, and the Bucks will start first and 20. Can't imagine the Eagles will decline. <laughs> It's 101 to play here in this third quarter, folks. If you joined us late. You missed well, a lot. <laughs> well, that's probably better. It's 48 to six. The Bucks up on top of the host Eagles. Here on a very nice night for football. The weather's been great. Tonight, tonight's been absolutely a beautiful night. Uh, and that's at least leading to some people to stay here on a Thursday night. It looks like the holding call was from the point of the infraction. So it's more like first and 24. This time the pitch goes left for Ortiz. He fights, breaks two tackles, three tackles, finally ripped down from behind, but a great job that time by Chris Ortiz to pick up some yardage. He was stopped after two or three yards, but uh, really second and third effort got him extra, extra yardage before Steve Flowers brought him down. Picked up about 12 on that play, perhaps 13, make it second and 11 from the Bucks' 45-yard line. Offsides, Nars down. Two players for the Eagles jumped so sure. offsides there. They're discussing it now. There's a chance that the, uh, the Bucks may have jumped on that one. They may have an offensive lineman who jumped early to draw the Eagles offsides, and that's what it was. Good so. call, Walt. Narstan will be in a position to have a little more yards to play with on defense. And the Bucks immediately, I think they knew that, the Bucks immediately walked back to their huddle. Um, and one of those second team linemen jumped off, and that's what drew the Eagles off. And as soon as the Eagles made contact, then of course the play is called. 
And that's the end of the third quarter. We won't have far to go as the Bucks are set up at their own 40-yard line. They'll switch sides of the field here. It'll be second and 16 with 12 minutes to go in this game. Well, folks, I've never seen this either. <laughs> we didn't switch sides of the field. Somebody's got to explain that one to me. Well, now I've seen everything. Can somebody tell me what's going on? Well, I think they, they may not be switching sides okay. as, as they, they didn't. Yeah, they're switching sides now. As the, That last quarter was ending on that penalty. So that was technically a play in still in the third quarter, although the clock began to run down. But that last play was technically in the third quarter. As I think the officials didn't enforce the, the side change because of that last penalty call. The officials now asking that the clock be reset to 12 minutes. That play was, as you say, Walt, still in the third quarter. Now they'll switch sides. Well, it's a track meet out there now, Jeff. They're, they're, they're jogging back up and down, back and forth up the field, trying to find the right spot. And uh, I think the officials have been lulled a little bit into this blowout. If the sticks are, are just moving now. I don't think anybody knows really what's going on at this point. And I think they've wrapped up about five of the bucks over there in those chains. And the bucks are coming out of their huddle ready to play. It's like, uh, sorry, fellas, <laughs> we've got a little delay here on the field. We're waiting for the clock to be reset here, folks. It'll be third and 10 from the 45-yard 40, line. And Walt, that's another consequence of these wholesale changes. You know, you have these squads in here that aren't quite used to playing in these situations, and everybody gets a little jumpy. You have more penalties and more confusion. And the officials are now set to go. We've got 12 minutes to play in the game. Forget that last six second play. Now we're ready to go. <laughs> and now they call timeout. <laughs> okay, folks, I've seen everything. <laughs> this is absolutely unbelievable. Mike Petton calls time. Well, we just had a, about a three minute delay. <laughs> At the end of it, Mike Petton calls time. Well, if you're going to use your timeouts, you might, might as well make the most of them. And uh, he used all the time as the clock was being reset, and then has every right to use his timeout and does. So uh, Mike Petton, you know, Jeff, this may be an attempt to settle down his team as there was, a, there was a bit of confusion there for everybody involved. And he may just be telling them right now, hey, look, there's still 12 minutes to go. This is still your football game right now. You've only been playing a half. Uh, and, you know, I don't want you guys to slip down. As we know, he's a stickler for discipline. Uh, so right now he may be trying to keep his, his second team a little bit focused right now, as it doesn't do them any good to come out and be unfocused. And at the worst, that's how you get somebody hurt. Some of these players in there for Narstown, we've got number 84, James Webb, uh, number 20, Bobby Davis, number 41, Ian Stead, number 35, Daryl Johnston, number 25 in the secondary is Lawrence Arrington, number 44 also at safety, John Bird. Try and get you some of the rest of these players here. Third and ten. New quarterback for the Bucks. They go upstairs. Ball's completed to Ortiz. Close to the first down. Good flying tackle that time. In a quarterback now is number 32 for the Bucks. Bill Stone. I like that better name than Paul Picotti. Bill Stone, much better, much much more solid name. Yeah, Paul Picotti is your is your your linebacker name. You know, I had Bill that last night at the Olive Garden. Paul, Paul Picotti. Oh, that's tasty. That red sauce with the Paul Picotti. Oh. Fourth down, the Bucks are going for it. Well, I'll tell you, show no fear.